Greetings! Welcome to Electronics 2, lecture number 3. I am Bezal Rozavi. Today we will uh, look at the cascode structure as an amplifying device and see that it has some nice properties that we have not uh, been able to uh, find in Electronics 1, in the circuits that we studied in earlier Electronics courses. Uh, so today I would like to uh, start with the MOS cascode amplifier and see what it looks like and what it does and then we will see that to maximize the benefit of this amplifier we need to use a cascode load also along with the amplifier so we'll see how that goes and then we will also extend these ideas to the bipolar version uh, which is very sim a simple extension of of the MOS uh, amplifier using cascodes. Okay, so but before we go there, let's uh, review what we learned in lecture number two. So here we go to this uh, page. All right, so in lecture number two, we uh, followed two main topics. One was uh, the P-type cascode current source versus the N-type. And generally we said that for uh, P-type current source, for N-type current sources, uh, we are try trying to draw a current from a node in the circuit to ground. And for P-type, we're trying to inject a current into a node from VDD. So, for the N-type, we can use an NMOS device, we can degenerate it, or we can cascode it. Similarly, for the P-type, we can use a PMOS device with a source connected to VDD and a drain connected to the node of interest or we can degenerate it or we can cascode it so depending on uh, what we are looking for the amount of output impedance that we are looking for we choose one of these all right and the second topic that uh, we studied last time related to a different way of calculating the voltage gain of circuits compared to what we did in electronics one and here the idea was as follows we have a simple linear circuit uh, that has an input voltage and produces an output voltage and we would like to find the voltage gain V out over V in from a small signal perspective. Okay, we said that we will carry out this calculation in two steps. In step number one, we place an AC short at the output to ground to the, at the output port and we measure the resulting current in this short circuit as a function of the voltage that we applied here. And the ratio of these will be called the transconductance of that circuit. Okay, this is something that we have not seen in electronics one. Okay, and the second step, this is something we have seen in electronics one, we will find the output resistance of the circuit, like the Thevenin resistance. And for that, we set all the independent sources to zero. So this becomes a short circuit. And we apply voltage at the output and measure the resulting current, and that ratio will give us the output resistance. And now we write the voltage gain of the original circuit, this circuit, as minus GM, the transconductance of the circuit, times the output resistance. So it's interesting that this circuit has such a relationship with these two. These look very different from this one, right? Here we have an AC short, here we have an AC short, but what we get from these two gives us the voltage gain of this circuit. And the important conclusion here was to maximize the voltage gain, we can try to maximize GM or R out. And we'll have to see in practice which one is possible and how. Okay, so based on that, let's go back to today's lecture and see how we can build a cascode structure. Well, remember, when we studied the cascode uh, topology, we saw that the output impedance of the circuit was pretty high. The first order was like GM1R01 times R02. So uh, it takes the output impedance of one current source and boosts it by some amount. So if the output impedance of the cascode is high, meaning R out in that equation I just showed you, is high, maybe it's a good candidate for amplification. All right, so we're going to talk about the cascode amplifier. And here's how we think about it. I have a simple common source stage 
which I learned in uh, electronics one. And what I observed was that the voltage gain of the circuit, if this is an ideal current source, is just uh, minus gm ro, right? The intrinsic gain of the transistor. So this is not a very high value, maybe 10 or something. So we would like to go to a higher gain. So what I'm thinking now is, okay, I can write this as minus gm r out. And in this simple case, this is the same and this is the same, right? Uh, but I'm thinking, can I increase r out? Okay, well, I know that uh, a cascode structure gives me a higher output resistance, right? Oh, we have proper biasing here and here, but don't worry about biasing. We're just looking at the amplifier as a small signal circuit. And I'm thinking that uh, I have M1 and M2 here. And what I know is that if I look at the output impedance of the circuit, meaning this is constant, it's uh, just a bias, it's AC short, and I look at this output impedance, this is just a current source, and I know it has a high output impedance. So now, based on this equation, I'm thinking that, okay, when I go from here to here, I manage to increase R out. So if I do not decrease GM, as I go from here to here, then the voltage gain has to increase as I go from here to here. So that's the thought process. Okay? All right. So then let's go ahead and calculate the voltage gain of the stage. All right. So we have to be careful here. Actually, let me uh, pull, pull this down a little bit. I need a little more room here. So... Here's our input transistor, V in, M2. Sometimes we call this, we call this usually the cascode transistor, maybe the output transistor. And now this device is receiving a signal. It's not a, just a current source anymore. So we may call it the input transistor. All right, well, uh, to calculate the voltage gain of the circuit, I'm going to use this approach. So. We start with step A. Step A requires that we place a short circuit at the output to ground. We short circuit the output port and measure the resulting current in response to a voltage. So let's do that. We, uh, we're trying to build this small signal model. So this gate is AC ground. This receives an input. And uh, this has to be shorted to ground. We have a current flowing through this, hopefully. And then this guy goes away because it's an ideal current source. An ideal current source becomes an open circuit in the small signal model. Okay. All right. So, uh, so again, we call this M1 and M2. All right. In this setup, do I know how much current I have here? Small signal current. Well, what does this transistor do? If this transistor measures a voltage here, a small signal voltage, and converts it to current. So what I should see here is GM2 V in, as far as the small signal operation of M2 is concerned. And remember, M1 and M2 are both in saturation. Okay, so M2 generates this much current. Is, this is similar to here, right? This current is also equal to Gm times V in, except that we call this Gm2 here. All right, now uh, this current flows through M1 and becomes I out. So I can say that in this test, Actually, I out is simply given by GM2 V in, which means uh, the big GM is just equal to the GM of this device, the input device, GM2. Okay, so that's pretty good. 
That was very simple, right? We didn't need to draw any complex circuits or write lots of equations. By inspection of the circuit, we were able to find the transconductance of this simple cascode amplifier. All right, the second step, we have to find R out. So for that, we have to construct this circuit. Here's the cascode. So again, M1 and M2. This is connected to a bias, so it becomes AC ground. And we have to set all independent sources to zero. So this also has to become AC ground. Then we have to apply a voltage source from outside and measure the resulting current. We're trying to find the Thevenin resistance or Norton resistance of this circuit. But we don't have to do this calculation because in the previous lecture, we actually found this output impedance, right? We said, well, M1 is just degenerated by RO2 because in this scenario, M2 is only a resistor, the output resistance. Uh, because the gate source voltage is constant, it's not changing with time, the internal dependent current source becomes zero. So all we are left with is RO2. So M1 is degenerated by RO2. So here's RO2. And uh, the output resistance can be written as 1 plus the intrinsic gain of this device. So GM1 R01 times the degeneration resistance R02 plus RO of this device, R01. Okay, so we have our out, we have capital GM, we can find the voltage gain, right? So the voltage gain of the stage is equal to minus capital GM, which is a GM2 times uh, this entire R out, so 1 plus GM1, RO1, RO2 plus RO1. Okay? So you see that the beauty of this technique is that it simplifies the circuits into manageable pieces. So we were able to find GM without much work by just inspection. Similarly, we were able to find R out without much work. And that's why we can quickly write the voltage gain of this circuit with an ideal current source up here. Okay, that's great. Uh, if you want, we can simplify things here. So uh, if I assume this GM1 R01 is much greater than one, and as usual, if I assume GM1 R02 is also much greater than one, this comes out to be approximately minus GM1 RO1, GM2 RO2. So this is very interesting. It says that the voltage gain of a cascode like this compared to the voltage gain of a simple common source stage like this has a boosting factor equal to GM2 RO2 or GM1 RO1. Right, so if I call this M2, just like this, so I'm thinking that cascoding means I took the original transistor and placed another one on top of it, right? I added M1 in here. So adding M1 increased the output impedance by a factor of GM1 R01. Uh, the, uh, the output impedance and the voltage gain. So we see that the voltage gain was boosted by an amount equal to the intrinsic gain of the cascode device. So now we have two intrinsic gains multiplied by each other, and this gain can be on the order of several hundred, maybe a thousand if you work hard, and so on. Okay, now, uh, there is one little note. Uh, there's something here that I have sort of swept under the rug so far, and that's the following. So let me change the color of my pen and uh, see what we can do here. Okay, so let's go to red. This M2 that is sitting here in this test, in test number A, we said that the current of M2 is GM2V in, 
and then all of that current flows through M1. Is that really true? Well, M2 does have an output resistance, does it not? So here's the output resistance of M2, RO2. So, yes, before we reach RO2, the dependent source inside M2 is generating a current equal to GM2 Vn. But now, that's the current in this little branch right here, okay? But now it wants to flow, and it sees two branches. It sees this branch, and it sees this branch. So there will be some current division between these two branches, right? A fraction of the current will be wasted through RO2, and the rest of it will go through M1. So, I out is not exactly equal to GM2VN, okay? There's an approximation here because of what we lost here through RO2. That means that uh, the capital GM is not exactly equal to GM2 and so on, but it's a pretty good approximation. So that's why we don't bother with uh, this that much. Okay, so uh, in that respect, I want to give you a little quiz and I'll give you one minute to think about it. The quiz is as follows. Uh, I am saying that the current that comes out of M2 is split between this branch and that branch. Now, the current prefers to go through the lowest impedance that it sees. So we are hoping that most of the current goes this way and a small amount of current goes this way. That means that we are hoping that the impedance seen up here through the source of M1 is quite low compared to this impedance, so that the current that comes out of M2 prefers to flow this way, not this way. So the question is, what is the impedance that I see here if I sit at the source of M1 and I look up? So let's draw M1 in test A, M1. This is also AC ground. I'm sitting here. Let's call this Rx. Okay, how much is Rx? I'll give you one minute to think about it. Okay, so what did you get? Well, uh, the key here is that in the test A, in this environment, the drain, meaning the output node, is grounded, and so is the gate. So we see that the gate and the drain are connected to the same node. So this device actually looks like this. This is grounded, and this is grounded, right? They're both grounded. So if I'm sitting here and I'm looking up to this source, what I see is a diode connected MOS device, only as far as Rx is concerned. Right? If you sit here, what you observe is that the gate is at AC ground, the drain is at AC ground, so this looks like a diode connected device. And we know that the impedance of a diode connected device is given by. 1 over GM, in this case GM1, this is M1, and if you want to be more precise, in parallel with RO1. Remember that from electronics 1. So the key point here is that if I sit at this node and look up, I see something on the order of 1 over GM1 or lower, 
So that's a pretty small resistance. Whereas the impedance connected here is RO, which is a relatively high resistance. So it makes sense that the current coming out of M2 prefers to flow this way and not this way. So the fraction that we lose through RO2 will be only a small fraction compared to what goes through M1. And that justifies this approximation and this approximation and that approximation. Okay, very good. So that's uh, what we have for the cascode amplifier. This amplifier is extremely common, extremely useful. It's been around for decades and it's a beautiful invention. You can see that it provides uh, a higher gain compared to a simple common source stage. It has many other benefits that we will discover as we go through this course. Okay, well, that's great, and this equation is nice, but uh, uh, this is actually not totally realistic, right? Uh, because I have assumed that there's an ideal current source here. Now, I cannot go and buy an ideal current source. So I have to replace this current source with something also. So what can I do? Remember that this is the positive supply, so I'll call this VDD, and something has to go in the place of this. The point is that we need a path for the bias current to flow from VDD through M1 through M2. So something has to go here. It can be a resistor, an inductor, a current source, whatever we need. Okay, so in that spirit, I have to figure out what I'm going to use there. So let me show you an example. I will go to the next page and uh, let's go to page three. Okay, so let's look at an example so that we just get comfortable with these equations that we have derived. Uh, let's see, I'll go back to blue. Uh, <clears throat> Alright, so I would like to find the voltage gain of this circuit instead. I decided to use only a resistor for the load instead of a current source for now. So this is the output and this is the input and I would like to find the voltage gain and again this is of course some sort of bias properly chosen to make sure that both M1 and M2 are in saturation. Okay so how do we go about calculating the voltage gain of the circuit? Well, again, we go back to that expression. The voltage gain is given by minus capital GM, capital R out. So we just use that. All right, so test number A says take this circuit and place an AC short at the output port. So here's an AC short. So here's our input voltage. This is AC ground. This is an AC short and we are interested in this current. There's a resistor that goes from here to VDD. VDD becomes AC ground because this value of VDD does not change with time or with the signal level. So VDD, uh, sorry, RD goes to ground and uh, that's what we would like to find. So GM is equal to I out over the in. Okay, so as we said, the current coming out of M2, this current is approximately equal to GM2 V in. Right, this device converts the small signal voltage at the gate source to a current and its value is GM2 V in. Some of it is lost to that RO2, but we neglect that. This current flows through M1 and comes out, so we have it over here. So this current is still approximately equal to GM2 V in. Now what is the relationship between I out and GM2 V in? Well, does RD have any current? The voltage from here to here is zero because we placed the short circuit to ground, right? So because this voltage is zero, Ohm's law says there's no current here, which means this current has to be equal to this current. 
So I out is simply equal to gm2 v in, and then that gets divided by v in. So not surprisingly, gm is the same as gm2, as we had it in the previous case. Okay. And then in test B, we need to find the output resistance of the circuit. So we uh, connect uh, the circuit like this. Maybe I will try, try to be more careful here. So we need to draw the small signal model. Mm -hmm. All right, so here's what we have. This is AC ground. Uh, the independent sources have to be set to zero when we are trying to find the Thevenin or Norton resistance. So this is set to zero. <clears throat> and we're trying to find this output resistance, Rd. Okay, so do I need to draw the small signal model of the circuit to find R out? No, if I sit here, I see two resistances to ground. One is RD, and one is this. So they're just in parallel. And how much is this resistance? If I sit here and I look to the right, left, that's the output resistance of a simple cascode, which we already have from the previous lecture. So M1, M2. Okay, so what I can say is that R out is the parallel combination of this resistor and this resistor. So RD, in parallel with, how much is the output distance of a cascode? One plus the intrinsic gain of the cascode device, GM1 V1, GM1 R1, times the degeneration resistance, which is just R02, because this reduces to a single resistor, R02, and then add it, add, add to that R01. So that is the output resistance of this entire circuit. And then the voltage gain is just uh, the product of these two. So minus GM2, this one times this one, right? Then we have RD, and then we have all of this. I'll just put an arrow here because I don't want to draw to write all of that. Okay, so you see uh, this expression uh, of uh, GM times uh, capital GM times capital R out, this method, is pretty powerful, right? Uh, I don't have to draw the small signal model for any of these things uh, because based on my previous knowledge, I can quickly find the voltage gain. Okay, very good. So we see that uh, if I use a resistor in place of the current source, the ideal current source, I have a problem because you can see that the output resistance is considerably lowered. We had a pretty high resistance from the cascode, but then we came along and placed a physical resistor in parallel with it. So the overall result is quite lower than what we had before. So that's not very good. What should we do? How do we keep this R out, the overall R out, and hence the overall voltage gain high? Okay, so this needs curly brackets to make sure that the products are correct. Okay, so I don't want to use a physical resistor. I'm going to use a current source. Okay, an actual current source. I cannot buy an ideal current source. Now, what type of current source should go here? We have a node in the circuit, and we want to place a current source from VDD to that node. So that is a P-type current source. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So we have cascode amp with current source load, meaning that the load resistor is replaced by a current source. Okay, so here's how it goes. We have a PMOS current source providing current from VDD to the node of interest. The node of interest is this output here. And then, of course, we have our usual cascode amplifier. So V in goes here, V out goes here. 
And there are proper biases at these nodes, so we don't worry about those for now. VB1, VB3, M1, M2, M3. Okay? So we expect that uh, this circuit can have a higher gain than this circuit if we can make M3 present a higher resistance than RD. Okay? M3 presents a resistance to the output equal to its output resistance, RO3. So I can just write this gain, uh, this gain or this output resistance again, assuming that I have replaced RD with RO3. So M3 reduces to its output resistance, RO3, to AC ground, and the rest of the cascode is the same as before. So, I can write the voltage gain here as the GM doesn't change, right? This GM has nothing to do with whatever we have here. So, minus GM2. Okay, then we have this resistor taking the place of RD. So, I have to replace RD with RO3 in parallel with what? in parallel with the resistance of the cascode. In other words, if I sit here, I see a resistance this way to AC ground, in parallel with the resistance this way to AC ground. So I'm placing these in parallel, RO3, in parallel with whatever you have, which is your standard uh, 1 plus GM1 RO1, RO2 plus RO1, and that is the overall voltage gain of the circuit. So you see that we are gradually building up uh, these equations and these topologies so that as we see a more and more complex circuit, we can still quantify its behavior by means of inspection rather than jump into equivalent circuits and try to draw small signal models and write lots of KVs and KCLs, right? Of course, at some point, in some cases, we have to write KVs and KCLs, and that's perfectly fine. But if we can, we want to do it by inspection, because this gives us a lot more understanding and intuition about the circuit. Okay, so if RO3 in this circuit is greater than RD in that circuit, then this circuit has a higher gain than that circuit. So, to some extent, that might be true. But can we do better? Can we increase the voltage gain of the cascode amplifier further? Well, the situation is that this current source is a single current source, right? A single transistor. And we know that a single transistor has only a, an output resistance equal to RO. Well, remember how we increase the output impedance of a current source? So let me go back to the review of the previous lecture and show you what happened. So we, uh, in our attempt to build a good current source, we use the PMOS device for uh, drawing the current from VDD to a node. Then we said we could degenerate it to raise the output resistance. Or we can use a cascode to have a higher output resistance. So if I want to use the current source as the load of my circuit, something like this, and I cannot buy an ideal current source, I can come close to it by replacing it by a cascode current source. And that's what we are going to do next. Okay, so the idea now is that uh, I'm going to replace this PMOS current source with a cascode PMOS current source. So here's what we have. So uh, cascode amplifier with cascode load. So here's our cascode amplifier. What we started with, we were trying to achieve a high output resistance without losing much GM, 
so that GMR out becomes a large value, the gain. So that's great. But then originally we had a current source up here, an ideal current source. So now we're trying to realize it. And the best we can do is use a cascode current source here as well. So here's a cascode current source coming from BDD. And again, we have all these biases here. So VB4, VB3, VB1. This is M1, this is M2, this is M3, and this is M4. Okay, that's sort of the best we can do, right? We cannot go and buy an ideal current source to put here, so that's why we have to build it like that. And this part is necessary because uh, compared to a single common source stage, this has a higher output impedance and approximately the same transconductance. So this gives us a higher resistance. This also gives us a higher resistance. So together, they give us a high resistance, so they allow us to achieve a high voltage gain. Can we write the voltage gain of the circuit without uh, drawing the small signal model? Sure. So we say, uh, again, step number A, we have to find the transconductance. How much is the transconductance? It's still the transconductance of M2, right? Because if I place a short circuit here, and I look at the current here, this part of the circuit goes out of the picture just the way this went out of the picture. Same thing, right? So because this goes out of the picture, this goes out of the picture, so this big GM is still equal to GM2. So all we have to do is step B, so we have to find the output resistance. Okay, so we have to be patient, and we really have to master all of the equations that we have derived so far in order to be able to find this arrow out without too much uh, manual labor. All right, well, the objective is to find this output resistance here, right? And what we see is that if I sit here, there are two branches to AC ground. One is this way, one is this way, right, like here. If we sit here, there are two branches. One is this way, one is this way. And that reduced to this nice, simple topology as far as the output resistance is concerned. So here is the same situation. I have a resistance looking up this way. I have a resistance looking down this way. And these two are in parallel. Just the way this and this ended up in parallel, right? This branch and this whole branch ended up in parallel. So same thing here. Okay, so I can write R out. The output distance of this entire cascode with cascode load is equal to two big uh, resistances in parallel. So let me give more room here. So something like this. Okay, so what we see looking this way, in parallel, what we see looking this way. Just like here, right? What we see looking this way, in parallel, what we see looking this way. Okay, so what do I see looking down? If I sit here and look into drain of M1, I see the output resistance of an NMOS cascode structure with the input set to zero, because when we are trying to find the output resistance, all independent sources are set to zero. Okay, so that's just like the uh, standard cascode current source, and we have an equation for the output resistance. So that's one plus GMRO of the cascode device times the degeneration resistance, RO2, plus the resistance of the cascode device. And then we have another one looking up. Again, we are looking to drain of a cascode current source. And it doesn't matter that it's PMOS because for small signal analysis, the output resistance of a, a PMOS cascode is the same as the output resistance of an NMOS cascode. So this would be one plus 
GMRO of the cascode device or the output device, which is this guy. This is critical. We must not confuse these two. So it is this one because it's drain connects to the node of interest. So GM3RO3 times the degeneration resistance. This degenerates this. So that's RO4 and then plus RO3. So this is the output resistance of this whole structure. And GM is just GM2. So the product of these two gives us the overall voltage gain that we can achieve. So the voltage gain that we can get out of a stage like this is uh, on the order of tens to hundreds, depending on the technology, the design, and so forth. Okay, so that's the range of numbers that we could expect from the voltage gain of this. So maybe gain of 50, gain of 100, 200, 300, something like that. Okay, so this is sort of the best we can do in terms of achieving gain out of a single amplifier stage, right? This is still a single stage in that there's an input voltage and there's an output voltage, right? And there's nothing else. So uh, that's how we can get a gain from here. Okay, very good. Uh, the bipolar counterpart is very simple. So here's the bipolar uh, amplifier, bipolar cascode, amp. So we just replace all of these with NPN devices and PNP devices. So here's our NPN branch, for example, for the input. And then uh, from the positive supply, VCC, you need to have a current source connected to this node. So that would be the PNP version of the cascode. So here's a PNP. And this is the output voltage. And again, all of these require proper biases to make sure that the transistors operate in the forward active region. So we won't bother calculating the voltage gain of the circuit. It's similar to these, except that, remember, there's an RPI here that we have to worry about. There's an RPI here that we have to worry about and so on, but uh, it's a similar relationship. Okay, so these two, this one and this one, are sort of the most common type of cascode amplifiers that we can build. All right, I would like to leave you with one question before I conclude this lecture. And here's the question. So I will go to a new page and draw that for you. <clears throat> okay, so here's the question of the day. Let's take one of the cascodes that we had. Here's our cascode amplifier. We in, we out, M2, M1, M2. And I want to have a current source up here, so I chose a PMOS device. Here's a PMOS device, call it M3. And now I'm going to use resistive degeneration to increase the output resistance of this transistor. So here's resistive degeneration RS, and this is VDD. So of course we have problem biasing here and here. So our objective is to calculate the voltage gain of the circuit. So how much is AV? And again, we have to be uh, very careful, we can go through the two steps, step A, step B, find the, the transconductance and the output resistance, and then multiply them to find the voltage gain. So you can work on that, and I will answer this question in the next lecture. All right, this concludes this lecture. I will see you next time.